Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today it's a look inside and we're taking a look inside this vintage transistor tester. You might remember this from one of my recent mailbag videos. I picked it up quite cheaply on eBay. Looks rather promising. It's Japanese made and it all seems to be in pretty good condition. So what I'd like to do with this one is have a look inside, see what makes it work, see what we've got inside this little beauty and then let's give it a test let's see if we can test some transistors with the transistor tester let's get it over on the bench right so here we go the TTC C3022 transistor checker I've seen this particular transistor checker also branded as Eagle and at least one other name that I failed to remember it's a cool little gadget so I thought what we do today we'll take it apart see what's inside give it a clean up and give it a test see what we can do with it so it's made in Japan didn't come with any instructions or anything but I managed to find some online and a schematic seems to be pretty much just a bunch of resistors and a meter and some shunts inside so pretty simple stuff so I reckon let's let's get this part and see what we can do it's a cool little thing it's another one from my collection of antiquities i love these old meters i like collecting things like this because they're pretty cheap to buy there's a lot of them about and i think they're interesting and they look really cool on my shelf and they don't just sit on the shelf sometimes i get them down and have a tinker with them and play around and test them out we've got a few that you've probably seen on the recent mailbag videos and i'll just gradually work my way through them looks like I'm guessing just four screws to get this hole right oh it's still got a battery in it would you believe look at this okay so everything's on the panel itself no PCB or anything of course hmm okay well it looks to be in pretty good shape there's no real corrosion a little bit of dirt here and there we can clean that off N7 scribed on the back there. So we've got our two terminals here. We've got a potentiometer. We've got a rather lovely switch. Look at that switch. That's satisfying, isn't it? That's why I like this old stuff. It's just really satisfying to use. We've got another one here, look. The, the main selector between MPN and PNP. Oh, this is beautiful. Look, I love to see this stuff. This is so cool. This is a bit like one of those switches I had in one of the old mailbag episodes where I got that whole bunch of RS stuff. I think it was the one before that, actually, just some random vintage components. And there were some switches that were a little bit like this. That is very cool. It's one thing just operating these devices from the front. Yeah, it's cool. It feels good. But when you see what it's doing on the inside, is it just me or... I find that beautiful, things like that. Really do like that. Of course, when something like this came out, you had a radio and, you know, you, you might have had a, a meter, like one of those PIFCO meters or something, but having something like this you can check transistors and diodes with, wow, that was a game changer back in the day. So we've got a battery still attached. <laughs> Very lucky that it hasn't leaked everywhere. And it is a high watt battery for transistor radios, but also general purpose. <laughs> so you can use it for anything, but mainly radios. It's cool though, isn't it? I love seeing the old artwork on the batteries. I'm such a battery geek. I love the old Ever Ready. They just look so cool. Got a little thing there to hold your battery in place, which just swings around in the breeze. I don't want to do anything up too tight. This feels like it might be Bakelite. I'm not too sure if that's Bakelite or plastic. I think it's Bakelite. I'm going to go ahead and say that's Bakelite. I could be wrong. Prove me wrong in the comments down below if you think this might be an early plastic moulding. It feels and sounds like Bakelite to me though. That's very cool. And of course it's got the metal inserts for the screws as well. Nice, love that. Here's our meter movement with the resistor across the back. 
is really pretty simple, isn't it? That's your component tester. That's where you put your transistor in on the front there. And you've got your three connections there. It's really, really simple. One switch here for PMP or MPN or your diode mode. Push to check. Connections there for your diode. Switch there. So you've got general mode, high power mode, or the middle one is adjust, which you can adjust with this part here. That's cool. I like it. It needs a good clean up. We're going to give it a good clean and we're going to see if it works. Can I test a transistor with it? I don't really want to take all the meter movement apart. Generally, if something's not broke, then I leave well alone. It's got the serial number there and the model number C3022. The serial number is M865155. Don't know if that can be used to date it. I've got a schematic there. It's not a great printout, unfortunately, but it's pretty simple. It is just a bunch of resistors, some switches, a meter, and some shunts. And it gives all your resistor values down there, which you can just about see. And some really simple instructions, how to use it as a transistor tester and how to use it as a diode checker. So I reckon we can do that. I reckon we could do that. I reckon let's give this a clean up, reassemble, find a slightly newer battery, and we'll give it a go, shall we? Now, do you know, I always check, no matter how ancient these batteries are that I pull out of these things. Remember the Claire, was it a Claire insulation tester, I think? Oh no, it was a Mega, wasn't it? It was a Mega insulation tester, and it had a big old EverReady battery in it. I always, I always love to check the battery. I know this is going to be dead as anything, but you just never know. We've got 9.32 volts in that battery. Well, I'm surprised. 9.32 volts. It's actually a pretty good battery. Just better than this recently purchased one. I've used a few times. 9.16 volts. This has surely got to be quite an old. The date code on there is December 99. <laughs> wow. It's like 25 and a half years old and still reading 9.3 volts. That's so cool. I tend to favour kitchen roll or poly roll rather than blue roll. I find the blue roll sometimes leaves fragments on stuff and it can be sometimes a little harsh. Look at that, that's come up lovely. Look at that shine on that, beautiful. Now, for the sake of reliability and sanity, I am gonna put a new battery in, even though it tests at less than that one. Now, I, I can't remember from memory, that looks to me ever so slightly bulged, but whether those metal casings were like that, I don't know. I'm not going to take the risk. That battery is 25 years old, so let's put a new one in. I will tighten this up ever so slightly, but not much, just literally finger tight. Okay because I don't want to risk cracking this. I'm just going to clean it up as best I can because sometimes if something's working, it's best to just leave well alone. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful, hey? I mean, I could go to the travel at some point of taking all these off and giving it a deep clean, but I think for now, let's just get the worst of the grime off. Sometimes I take the knobs off and I either use a foam cleanser or put them in the ultrasonic cleaner. That sometimes does the trick quite nicely. The only thing I dislike about the ultrasonic cleaner is just the noise it makes.
It's looking a lot better now. Let's get these little screws in. There you go, that's not so bad, is it? That looks a lot better. I'm chuffed with that, I think that looks awesome. That looks really cool. The case looks lovely, it's really shiny. I'm easily pleased, but I love these old meters. I just think they're so cool. They're of a different time. They're a little bit, they're a little bit older than stuff that I've worked on previously. Up until I started this channel, now I'm working on all sorts of gear from all sorts of different decades. I've got a, a meter somewhere here from 1923. I don't think it's been in an episode yet, but you're gonna see that come up somewhere soon. So what does the instructions tell me then? Set the selector switch to either PNP or NPN, depending on the type of transistor. Right, let's find a transistor. Right, so we've got our transistor in here. You can see I'm using a 3904. This is the first one to test. I've had to bend the legs a bit at weird angle to fit it in the socket. You can, of course, just use test leads. Now, let's put this down flat. So what I gleaned from the instructions is we need to turn this, this is an MPN transistor. So we turn it to MPN, then we turn this to adjust. Here we go. Now we want to get the needle apparently to 300 on the alpha beta scale. There you go, roughly, roughly, roughly. Okay, now we are, this is a general purpose MPN transistor. So we turn this to general. If you're doing a power transistor, you turn it to high power, high power. Press this up to check the leakage. No leakage. Believe this to be a good transistor. Well, it's a brand new one. It's never been fitted. Push down to check your alpha and beta, which I think beta is now HFE, I believe. So... Alpha's reading at, what, just below 0.995. And the beta is reading at about, what's that, 180? Yeah, something like that. So, from what I gather, that's a pretty good transistor. All right, so that's a silicon transistor, NPN. All right, why don't we take a look at a germanium transistor? See, this is, actually having done a bit of research on this, is older than I think. I did see on the Vintage Radio Forum, somebody mentioned that it might be from 1963. So it's actually 60s rather than 70s. That would make sense looking at the components inside of it. For some reason I thought it was 70s, I don't know why. So it's earlier than I thought. Anyway, so we have a germanium transistor here as an OC71 so we can tell with this that the collector is here because we've got a red dot so collector wants to be at the top right there we go a little bit fiddly getting that in there so germanium transistor pretty old so are we going to see any leakage on this so this is an OC71 PNP germanium transistor so we turn it to PNP. Now let's go to adjust. We've got to make sure that's sitting at 300, which it is. That's excellent. Okay, so then we go back to general because it's a general purpose transistor. Any leakage? Yes, there is. Not surprising for a germanium transistor. They're not going to be as good as a silicon one. So our leakage in this case, we're looking at 8 microamps. Okay, and our alpha beta, there we go, 0.98 alpha, beta's about 50. Okay, there you go. That's your germanium OC71 transistor. Let me see what I've got in terms of diodes. Well, sticking with the theme of the age of this piece of equipment. I'm looking for some germanium diodes. Well, we've got some here, uh, OA81s I think. Uh, these for a few years. Okay, so we can see we're, we're polarized. We've got to get it in the right way. So we've got the line on here. This is not one of the Russian germanium diodes, so it doesn't have the confusing labeling system that we saw on one previously. Let me give them a quick clean. Right, okay, so we've got our polarity right. It says with the switch in reverse position, 
the ohmic value on the meter is the internal resistance of the diode for reverse voltage which should be very high okay which it is we're well over 200k ohms all right and then when we go to forward mode we should have a very low reading oh which we do it drops down to 200 ohms something like that the diode is considered good if the difference between forward and reverse shows a large ratio which it does this is a good diode fantastic that's good to know my my new old stock germanium diodes are actually okay well, you never know when you're going to need an oa81 do you haha <laughs> well the good news is this seems to work all right it's cleaned up nicely and it does the job so yeah super happy with it another nice addition to my collection and it's functional it does what it should be doing if i need to test a diode i can do so i mean i'm more likely to use one of my more modern devices to do that but should i feel in the mood to be a bit nostalgic and check a diode like this or a transistor i love the push to check it's really cool I just think it's a really cool thing. There you go. Let me know in the comments what you reckon or if you've used one of these or if you've got one of these. As I always say, it's all part of the fun. Well, I reckon that's a pretty cool bit of kit, that TTC transistor tester. It's not exactly the most efficient or modern way of measuring a transistor or a diode, but it's a lot of fun. I reckon it's pretty cool. I love collecting little things like this because it's just of a different time and it was a lot of fun taking a look at it and trying it out so i hope you've enjoyed today's video taking a look at the ttc transistor tester as always massive thanks to everyone for watching sharing liking and subscribing if you'd like to go ahead and hit the subscribe button it's always massively appreciated and helps to support the channel i'll be back soon with some more tech related videos but in the meantime take care and i'll see you on the next one